in a conformity on a Friday. Old ass COC as well. Man, that's, uh, I'm just uh, still kind of busted up over the idea. I'll never be able to catch those guys with that, with that lineup. I mean. Yeah, after the drummer. Yeah. Died. I mean, now, granted, I saw those assholes back in like 86, I want to say. Which is still pretty mind blowing, you know. But I mean, but they weren't a metal band. No, fuck that. That no. happened in like right at like 1990, 91, I want to say. Yeah, man. They were full fucking punk band at the time. And now are fucking warriors of the doom and yeah. gloom and sludge. Yeah, they uh, they found their niche and uh, you know and like sub genres of metal. That's for sure. Because that was Pepper singing, right? On this one, yeah. But right. he, I don't think he played guitar. I think right. all he did was sing. The yeah, man. The, no, the lineup is fucking altered dramatically over the years. I gotta see what that shit's all about. I mean, if you bring up their wiki page, probably fifteen fucking people have been in this band. Pepper off and on. I mean, I yeah, I remember they made a big deal of him coming back. Then they put that new album out. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's he's a founder, but I mean, damn, fucking been around as long as I've been alive. Yeah. Well, a little break in '06. Well, you know, and I mean, isn't that kind of what a lot of bands did? Kind of when the new metal was kind of really at its peak. Step back and do other shit. Yeah. God, man, I'd called uh, Henry Cervalli, if one of my favorite new metal artists, and that dude, I thought he was going to get on a plane from Finland and come over and kick my ass. Like, Hold on a second, motherfucker. So let's see. Pepper. Pepper joined in uh, 88 and was the rhythm guitar player and backing vocals up until 93 when they, uh, around the time they put out that Deliverance out. Deliverance is the first album where he's a lead singer. Yeah, wow. It's kind of like shit. Uh, Woody Weatherman's still in the band. Uh, Mike Dean is still in the band. Reed Mullen isn't yeah, in the band uh, anymore. He was. He was until <laughs> uh, a couple of months ago. It was the hardcore, legit, original lineup until Reed Mullen passed away. Yeah, man. But, I mean, but they've always found somebody to step into that role. I mean, every time yeah. that one guy gets pissed off and leaves the band, fucking, there's always somebody right behind him. God, man, it's amazing that fucking what your lead guitar player has been around for 38 years. Yeah, fuck, dude's older than I am, yeah. Shit. Props to that. I mean, even taking a break in, what was it, 07 till 2010, still got the old group back together. Well, uh, Mike Dean, the bass player, was a singer. They were a three-piece. Yeah. And put out two albums as which a three piece. Which is great because that venue I'd fucking check all these <laughs> punk shows at in El Paso. That stage was probably about, uh, I want to say maybe maybe tops eight feet deep and probably 12 feet wide. I love that shit. I mean, tiny. That's great. I, I, I miss going to shows like that. It's just not an option around here. I don't want to get shot or stabbed. Yeah. Well, and it was in the warehouse district. So then, like, whenever like a band would come, especially if like the bass player had a really big rig. The whole fucking building would just rattle the damn. whole time. <laughs> like, goddamn! I hope a bunch of important bolts don't come flying out of here, and this whole goddamn thing cra crashes down, kills a whole bunch of shitheads from the west side of El Paso. You think this linchpin's important? Man, no, 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 no. It's fine, fine. <laughs> oh man, how the hell are you? Not bad, man. It's been all right. It's been it's a weird week. It felt like it went really fast till about Wednesday afternoon, and it fucking started dragging like sludge at that point hump day usually does that i don't know man here lately like every day is about the same as the next kind of scoots by everything's good Ugh, not this week man and yeah, it's not anything any fuckery afoot it's just kind of like in my mind's eye it just felt like it took forever right just something in the air yeah something and i think the other part too is because i didn't pick up the guitar like all week well, that's not entirely true. I played a little acoustic yesterday. But but you weren't rocking at the uh, pace you were last week. Every time I came over here, you were jamming and continued yeah. for about a solid half hour, and you were probably jamming a half hour before that. Right. Yeah, no, it, it kind of comes and goes in waves. You know, I mean, yeah. there's some times that, like, if I'm kind of on to something, man, I'll play every day for fucking hours, you know. But then when I feel I've kind of kicked its ass, slain the dragon, and I move on, well, then that's when it's like, well, it's a perfect opportunity to not play guitar right now. Well, step away for a little bit. You know, wait for those creative juices to rise back to the top and get back in there and do work. Sometimes. 
Sometimes. But anyway, shit, man. How's your week going? Uh, well, it was shit until I got this kick-ass shirt I'm wearing right now. A couple of you had noticed from uh, the podcast last week is that uh, we're sporting new uh, we're sporting new shirts. And I knew we'd be uh, going fucking all uh, 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 fucking twinsies today. Oh, totally, man, yeah. Of course. It's like, I'm not not going to wear this. Cause I, this is what I wore to work today. Right. <laughs> This I, this is probably going to be my fucking new Thursday shirt. Yeah, good man. To replace the one that looks almost like it, only it's faded out of shit because I wear it once a week every week. Is that the winter fell shirt or something? I like know that? that's that fucking uh, one with the uh, runic fucking and the blade. Oh right, right, yeah, from the Spirit of Vikings. That's yeah. faded now, just to the point where it looks really cool. Yeah, yeah, shit, man. Yeah, well, uh, I I rotate shit around. I don't wear the uh, the other one too much. The brown, you know, right. uh, echoes of ancient shirt. Number one, I don't wear it at all in the summer hardly because that it's fucking brown. Well, and on top of that, that that applique that's on the front. Now, granted, that shirt will look good for fucking for as long as I'm alive. But man, it will make you sweat. That's some heavy. That's some heavy shit in the middle. Hot on the teats. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's weird. I'm kind of sweating, but only in a weird square area here. Man. You know, where's that shirt? Every time I see him, Ruben Gonzalez. Ruben Gonzalez, yeah. one and only. Fuck yeah. Because he Which, knows how to support motherfuckers. Yeah. Which, yeah, we've got the, the only three X I ordered for the entire fucking lot of shirts that we had. Well, he is the big man. <laughs> it's like, I don't know anybody else who wears a three X, but if I do, well, you're fucking out of luck, son. <laughs> it's, uh, used to be me. Yeah. Used to be me until uh, until I, I even had Jesus. to ask you. I was like, man, I know you used to be two X. Do I need to get like extra, extra larges for, you know? I was you- initially going to say yes out of just hubris, but of course, man, I'm fucking handsome. And you're svelte. a... Dude, you're a lot thinner than you were when we started kind of this whole fucking crazy play began a long, well, long time what, ago. That's what rice and a stressful job will do, man. I mean, honestly, man, you when you were kind of at your peak, so probably like 2013. I, I'd actually say 2012 would be more fair. Right, well, but we, I'm, I, but still we started ri- hanging on a riding regular, that peak yeah. into 2013 Oof. for sure. I was like, man, that's a, that's a big dude. That's a hoss. I was a big boy. Yeah. I was a big boy. And like I said, it took my grandfather getting sick for me to drop about 100 plus pounds. You fucking did. And I, I mean, you're like a normal sized dude now. I never took the uh, elevator at the hospital. They had my grandfather on the 10th floor. Jesus. Because <laughs> they had him in uh, the like ICU kidney unit thingy. Right. And I never took the elevator because it scared the shit out of me. Just sounded. You remember that uh, elevator when we went to San Antonio? San, yeah, that one. That was pretty creepy, right? I was assuming I was just going to die. I, well, that was it, my assumption. After the concert, it had been fine. Yeah, I'm like, all right, I saw a tool. We good. I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead and let and this I'm bastard gonna, come I'm, crash. I'm going to try to survive. I'm going to try to time that jump just right. Yeah, as, as you do. You know, I don't. As bl- we found out from watching Mythbusters, I don't believe that bullshit where the egg cracks. <laughs> I think you got a shot. You just got to time it right and don't jump like you're trying to hit your head on the roof. Yeah. God, so much it's nonsense. a nice little little butterfly jump, little little hummingbird jump. There was so much nonsense that came out of fucking MythBusters. Is crazy because that's what they. That was one of the things they kept trying to do. So they'd have a a robotic fucking thing in there to jump while it was inside of the fucking elevator, and they could never get it timed out right and everything else. And then the conclusion was like, I don't think actually this will work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say how we tried to bust it ain't gonna work. Well, in the same shit, they were like firing like rounds straight up in the air, thinking, okay, well, you know. Can it come down and, you know, is it, is it going to come down and kill people? Yeah, it does all the time in, like, the Middle East. Somebody gets married in Iraq, and motherfuckers are all out there with AKs and firing in the air, and, and then inevitably somebody dies. And sometimes they don't point it all the way up in the air. Well, that's the other thing, too, and that's what they were trying to say. It's like, well, if it goes straight in the air, then it'll, you know, reach z- zero-sum velocity, and it'll come c- back to Earth. Yeah, but who is firing exactly straight in the air? Nobody. Nobody. Sometimes they don't even fucking point it up in there. They just shoot people in the head by accident. Yeah. I've seen some videos. Yeah. I mean, every year you got motherfuckers dying in Mexico from that shit, you know? It's stupid, man. Yeah. What a dumb way to celebrate. I'm like, sorry. You know, fireworks are all right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and if that shit comes back down, it ain't going to fucking go through your skull. Well, yeah, what's wrong with fucking M80s, man, and things that are pretty instead of just fucking going off and blasting off your shoddy like a dipshit? Man, so the uh, talking about the shirts, if you want one of these bad motherfuckers, and if you're thinking, well, whoa, 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 what, what do they look like? Well, look at last week's fucking screen grab for the, uh, for the show. Mm. That's what they look like. Only 
better. I, actually, but better, yeah. They do look better. In the, person, uh, they look amazing. Yeah, because the one we used last week, that was one that was kind of, it was the built copy. Well, then their quality assurance goes in, which, by the way, I can't say enough good shit about Custom Ink. If you're, yeah, they did a hell of a job. I've got a coworker today, and she's like, you know, I'd probably get unit costs down like at least a dollar under what you paid for that. And I said, I know, but I'm dealing with professionals on this shit and not some asshole from Clovis that's like, nah, it's good enough. <laughs> yeah. The only person I'd m- mess with my printing stuff is that one gal at the uh, print shop down there. Oh, yeah. I, w- I will allow, if she wanted to make a shirt, I'd let her make a shirt because I know she's even going to be like, I-, I don't like this. She I gotta- is uh, what you call meticulous. Yes. <laughs> to a fault. But, uh, but yeah, no, the shirts look better than that shit from last week. But, um, but anyway, but yeah, you can hit us up. They're, they're, uh, they're 25 bucks. And, uh, and all of that actually goes to helping me buy a fucking expensive ass guitar here in about a month. So, That's right. It's coming up. Yeah. It's coming up. Yeah. And I mean, it's only going to be just a minor drop in the bucket from what we basically, because I mean, I think we make a couple of dollars per shirt. And that's it. And so it's like, man, I only ordered like 15. So, about enough to buy maybe the maybe the guitar cord for the fucking thing. <laughs> it's maybe a strap, you know, one of the cheap you ones. Know, cool kick ass sticker. But uh yeah, so that's coming up. And then the other thing too, if you want to represent shit, man, Echoes of Ancient Sea shirts are all right, man. Yeah. And you know, the reason we didn't go and just make the same shirt is that shirt was like a special shirt. Oh, the very first one? Yeah, yeah the man. brown shirt. That, that's a special shirt. That's not. Yeah, that's not one we're going to do another run of. And no. it's not even because that motherfucker makes me sweat in the summer. It's because right. uh, that was it. One run, one run and done, and there it is. Yeah. And if we had hung around long enough to do another one, it was going to be a different one. Oh, yeah. No, I. and even so, a couple more years down the road, I'm not going to do this one over again. No, something completely different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think you have to. I think, I think that shows progression of some kind. Yeah. Really need to work this logo into uh, maybe batch labels going forward. On the what? On batch labels. Not a bad idea, actually. Not a bad yeah. fucking idea at all. Because it's it needs to be shown. Yeah. No, it's it's a good looking logo. I mean, and really, um, shit. If for nothing else, maybe maybe it'd be a good idea for us to start looking at doing neck labels then, and with just the logo mm. on that. You know? Yeah, we're looking at our wall of fame here. I mean, the batch one l- logo really isn't a logo. No. If we wanted to replace that Roman numeral one and just put that in there. Well, because the latest batch one, it was a rune. So. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, we did change it up a little bit, didn't we? Yep. The one to the right. Yep. Uh, even if it's just like a little watermark down in the corner. Could. But uh, like I said, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to neck labels. Yeah. I mean, that's and fine. it does pop the bigger you're able to make it. Sure. Uh, it's good stuff. It's a good time to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, hell, who knows, man? Maybe, well, I don't know. I'll have to give some artistic thought to that on label design. A little but, autistic thought? Yeah. It's the Mead Metal and MMA podcast. We get together, uh, oh, shit, I don't know, once in a while, and we uh, go ahead and uh, discuss that matters of true. the day. This is the first time we've done a back-to-back or in a while. Yeah, since uh, 20, <laughs> all the way back in 2019. Oh, well, man, that, that long time ago. Well, and it's not because – it's – God damn it, we started taking it too seriously, and it's and this is not a show to be taken seriously. Yeah, I agree. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, and it was always one of those, like, well, at least it's some solid grounding here and, you know, gives us kind of a schedule to work with. We know what we're doing every Friday. But the problem was is because it also gave us some grounding, and also we knew what we were doing every Friday. So. Yeah, yeah, it dictated our Fridays, and not the entire evening, but certainly a chunk of it were – we have to kind of pause, get work done, and then we may frolic through the forest. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just like every week, every Friday for three fucking years, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, but and it, it props to us for doing it. Yeah. I mean, a weekly thing every Friday, whether both of us were here or not. Proved we can do it, man. Damn right. So I feel like 2020 is the year of doing it when the fuck we feel like it and when the situation warrants. Right. The uh, mead update for the week. Well, we've still got Troublemaker and a uh, and a primary fermenter. We'll probably deal with that this weekend, I think. And it'll it'll be fine. One hundred percent coronavirus free. <laughs> well, I, I assume. I assume because one of the headlines, actually, one of the things, shit, my brother Daryl just let me know that because that dude lives right outside of Austin. 
South by Southwest has been canceled, sir. Ooh, and that's a huge thing for us. That's like Austin's thing. That is their biggest event of the year. Now, on the top of that, then they don't get a bunch of goddamn deadbeats hanging out and fucking living living the homeless lifestyle that's over true. the space of a week. But you know, I've been to Austin twice. Never once thought about going for South by Southwest. Just doesn't interest me, man. I well. It, and it's only because for me is because God damn it. I don't like crowds that are that thick, right. man. I mean, I like to be able to get the fuck away from it. Like, all right, starting to get a little too crowded. Let me step aside. You, that one's you have to get the fuck out of downtown. I start freaking out if it gets crowded around me in the grocery store. Yeah. I had a goddamn panic attack just because people were hovering around me. This was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Just hovering around me. Fucking just, go, you know what you want. Get it and move. If I'm in your way at like, say, excuse me, I'll move. I don't want you here any longer than you need to be. Yeah. <laughs> this is fucking blows my mind. Well, you know, God, the other thing that's also kind of weird, you know, when we're joking about coronavirus and shit. So then I run into somebody I, I've known for, I don't know, God damn, it's been longer than that, 10 years now. Sees me at Walmart. She has to come up and give me a hug. I'm like, man, there's a coronavirus on. I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not really about that, you know. But it's one of those, it's like, and I, it wasn't even really, it, wa it wasn't even like a, yeah, I'll give you a hug. It was like, no, no, I'm getting a hug whether I fucking want one or not. And maybe even the coronavirus. Ugh. I'm not, I'm not all right with that. Yeah. Certain lines can't be crossed. Certain lines were crossed. Well, that's when you call your uh, policeman. I was just going to start screaming rape. That'd have been great. <laughs> In staying age, you might actually get some, uh, get some press for that. I'm weird about personal space. I admit it. I've got Man a weird diddled little... in a Walmart against yeah. his will. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I look really fun with my arms down to my sides. <laughs> looking, See, that... looking like somebody's like, fucking put jumper cables on a battery and attached <laughs> to my nuts. That shows how self-aware you have to be when you gamble that like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to do it. Oh, look, I did it. And if you get no response, then you failed. Yeah, that, that, I, that's when you immediately just like, oh, you're like, yep. All right. My bad. I'm a personable sort. The, the further away you are, the more personable I am. I'll give a wave. Hi. That's why but we're, man, that's why we're you nice start, in text messages. You start getting in my space. It's like, that's a problem. Yeah. And you got to respect the space. That's the thing. You got to respect the space. Oh, shit, man. But anyway, yeah, so that's the, uh, the Mead me batch. That's the one that's underway right now. Actually, what we're probably going to do on sales of the T-shirts is put that toward the honey required for another batch. Yes. Because so. we're open. We just keep rolling shit. We just keep rolling. Open it up the year with Troublemaker. Who knows what's going to happen after that? I mean, I'm not opposed to another batch one just because it goes fast. I'm no. almost not opposed to just always having batch one on hand. Always. It's an easy batch to start and finish. Yeah, yeah, it really is. You know, so I think the next time around is going to be interesting because the next time around is when we'll be utilizing the uh, the Premier QV. Because mm. I think that's I, the Lalvin D forty seven has done us a lot of favors over the years. I kind of want to do a batch and see what happens if we're using the fucking big dog and see what see what what happens with a batch. Now, if it's not a pleasant batch, all right, well, great cuz we we got D47 we can use. We'll drink it for penance and uh, move <laughs> on. Yeah. So, um yeah, likely is not I think another batch one run is probably in the offing. I think that's probably the smart way to move on yeah. that. I mean, clearly we're not going to be rocking Holly King in August. No. Um yeah, Holly King Reserve, matter of fact. Yeah. Um probably you know, maybe maybe long ships, I don't know. We'll see. You know, I mean, that's and, and God, that's not if I don't go deep on some research and want to whip out some kind of a fruit batch, too. Maybe it's time to look into something different. It's been a while since we've done something new. We could we could we could look into doing like a raspberry mead. I mean, now, granted, that's uh, if we're wanting to just get ladies interested in what we're making, because I can't think of a. Of a dude out there, prop. Well, then again, I, I say that I, I yeah, pause now because no. there are dudes drinking White Claws now. Dudes that used to talk shit about Zima. It's like, well, those are basically flavored Zimas, right? No sugar. Well, Zima had like I think that's one of the things. Z they're no, about Zima had Zima was sugar. Oh, it was, was it? basically smearing off ice from Canada. I don't know. You're not going to convince me that White Claws anything but a ladies' drink. So it's basically. Beer for ladies, the same way they market like seventy six calorie beer for dudes. 
which they've kind of stopped doing that. Remember Dr. Pepper 10 kind of yeah. killed the whole low cal Dr. thing for Dr. Pepper dudes. for men. Yeah. Yeah. Give, yeah. Give, either give me all or nothing, motherfuckers. Yeah. Don't give me a little taste of the good life. Like I don't think people are drinking sodas because they're uh, trying to maintain a healthy lifestyle. I don't think that's exactly it. Yeah, they're just trying to, you know, trying to see where life takes them. Uh, God, man, I've been going kind of deep on... Um, on um, the hot ones it's out of uh first we feast mm-hmm. you, shit you're the guy that got me onto that shit but so i went to a binge watching living shit out of that last sunday i'm talking no less than a dozen episodes easy and some of them are like 20 to 30 minutes long yeah I, i'd say the bulk of them unless it's somebody tapping out real early it's probably at least 25 minutes but i had a real eye-opening experience on the episode that steve-o was on yeah. dude from jackass I'd never heard about this. Did you know that there was like a weird at one time there was a feud between John Bon Jovi and Sebastian Bach? I don't think so. Well, apparently Bon Jovi ended up getting Skid Row kind of signed, I guess, with a major label and took him on their first tour and all this other shit and everything else. Well, apparently something ended up happening well actually i know what ended up happening apparently when when i hate this shit when when bands go on the road then they try to show how much they kind of like each other by pranking each other oh yeah pantera was well known for that which but they could get away with it because they were pantera yeah which go fuck yourself i mean come on man what are you trying to create discord and hate (laughs) fucking you know they they were uh pantera usually would do their pranks like while they were the other band would do in a set yeah and it was relegated to, like, uh, fucking shaving cream pies in the face or, like, toilet paper. Relatively, you know. Well, apparently Bon Jovi's crew thought it would be hilarious right before Skid Row goes on to hit Sebastian Bach with, a bu- like, a fucking, like, a bucket of frozen milk or something. I don't know. <laughs> a bucket of frozen Some, milk? Yeah. So that right before dude walks out. Right before. So then he gets out there. They bang out. <laughs> Two or three songs, and he immediately starts talking some shit about how fucking Bon Jovi needs to check his goddamn crew and all this other shit, uh. all this stuff. Well, so show gets <laughs> over. You know, I mean, he was talking some mad shit, apparently. Well, then the show gets over. That's what Bach does. Well, and John Bon Jovi won't let that shit sit. You know, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna rest that. So him, oh yeah, and, oh, and his dad and his brother and his entire fucking crew of like 40, 50 dudes all fucking descend on Sebastian Bach after the show, threatening that they're going to fucking kill him and cut his nuts <laughs> off and all this other shit, you know, and everything else. Well, bon Jovi's from Jersey, right? Uh, allegedly. <laughs> I think that's where the uh, Desperate Housewives are from, too, right? Yeah, that's where a lot of desperate people are yeah. from. But, uh, yeah, so that there was a big, massive falling out. You know, and, and, and Bon Jovi basically had said something like, uh, you know, when this is all over, I'm going to own you. Oh, OK, well, apparently he didn't because Skid Row went on to be a stellar success in the 90s, whereas Bon Jovi's best years were already behind them. Yeah, but it's just like Bruce Springsteen. He still has that fan base where he can play arenas. Well, if you have enough dumb people. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. bunch oh, yeah. of fucking slack jawed mouth breathing assholes. Sure. Man. God. But apparently then they'd reconciled here, I don't know, probably like seven, eight years ago or whatever. But in the words of Steve-O, Bon Jovi can go fuck himself. And I can stand behind that. I can stand behind that sentiment. Who has ever had anything nice to say about Bon Jovi that wasn't talking about young guns as well? I, I, man, I hated, I hated those assholes when I was in high school, and that was during their pinnacle. Oh, sure. Yeah, Slippery When Wet, when that came up. Yeah. I'd rather listen to fucking sammy hagar led fucking van halen right, listen to some fucking jackass sitting around with a goddamn spoon and a fucking saw <laughs> going 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 going, <laughs> going. I, I mean fuck how many off. teeth yeah but i don't know man but there was so much shitty music out of the 80s yeah. literally literally I've, I've been trying to open everybody's eyes to that because people start getting nostalgic <clears throat> all i gotta do is throw on docking you know or lynch mob shit you know something into the fire all I got to do is throw that on. Like, there there you go. That's that's the best they had, and that's why I fucking hate the 80s. There's only one song from Dawkin that I only remember fondly because it was from uh, Fre- uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. Okay. They actually wrote a song for the movie called, and because uh, the tagline of it was Dream Warriors. Right. 
And Dawkins wrote a song called Dream Warriors, and in the video, it's got all the characters from the movie and Freddy Krueger as well. Which I always thought was kind of weird, but kind of cool. Really kind of demystifies a horror character. Well, as long as Freddy's not like dancing and shit, right? It's still, this, it was the beginning of them trying to make Freddy cool. Which as, is what fucked the series after that. Sure. No, no. They try it in every series. It's cool for Freddy Krueger to be funny, man, but I still want him to be a creepy motherfucker. They started doing the same thing with Jason, started doing the same shit in, uh, in Halloween, of fucking uh, trying to make that little weirdo. Well, here was the thing. With those movies, you couldn't do it with your villain. You had to do it with your shit characters, make them stupid. Yeah. Because Jason don't talk. Right. He ain't going to do nothing funny except maybe zip up a sleeping bag two people are in and slam it against a tree repeatedly. And that's pretty funny. Right. Uh, same thing with uh, Michael Myers and Halloween. Busta Rhymes is in a Halloween movie. But I mean, but they always tried to not necessarily make him funny, but they would always try to cast them in this like, oh, yeah, you can kind of root for this guy. It's OK. I'm like, no, man, that's the goddamn villain. You should not be rooting for the villain. Halloween Resurrection. I was rooting for him to kill everybody. <laughs> everybody. I guess it would depend on the cast. Like, oh, I, hate, then, I hate all these people. And then kill himself. Because that that version of Michael Myers, I'm, that's my my horror franchise. Love the Halloween franchise. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, been I mean, a lot of it. I know because shit. Well, you like all aspects of it, but soundtrack especially. Soundtrack. Yeah, I think John Carpenter fucking nailed it. Yeah. And that dude makes pretty good fucking music outside of it too. That's one guy that damn. If he fuck, if that guy were to come within the eight hour bubble, I might consider it. A John Carpenter concert. Well, because you know the production would be right on scale with fucking Rob Zombie. Yeah, you know? and you know it's going to be a small gig. Yeah. John Carpenter is filling amphitheaters, not arenas. Right. Yeah. And I love well, going... Well, because I mean, that's not his day job anyway, but I get it. Yeah, but for a guy that's like a movie director, iconic at that, and also like does a little bit of touring on the side, sure, it's pretty dope. But yeah, again, uh, to quote Steve-O, uh, fuck John Bon Jovi. Fuck that guy. I so. believe that's the uh, the metal side <laughs> portion of our podcast. Uh, again, we uh, we have no LJ because uh, man's been going through some issues like we were talking about last week, right. passing of his father. Uh, seems to be doing better. LJ, so that's always sure. good. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I hadn't talked to the guy, so yeah. I, I, I've been hoping everything's cool. You know, I mean, I here's the problem. It's not so much I'm a cold-hearted prick, although you could make that argument. But I am. But um, or I can. I if I don't hear anything, if you don't need anything from me, I assume everything's probably okay. No news is good news, bro. I'm assuming you're working it through. Yeah. And you know, and if if it comes up that uh, you know some shit changes and you do need me, fucking hit me up. That's Absolutely. Cool. So uh, you got some uh, metal headlines, do you? Oh, God, man, I'll I'm, I'll dig. Yeah. Let's see, what we got here. All right. Um. Uh, I don't think any of the music coming out this week is particularly decent. There's a band called Crematory that put out an album. Now, if you want to hear symphonic kind of gothic metal with the Cookie Monster singing lyrics over it, this is the band that you need to check out. The front man kind of blew me away. That's the only reason why I clicked on the video. Because the front man is a large man. A large bald man. A large bald man with Elvis Presley mutton chops. And he's from Germany. And it's, it's, I've never heard anything like it because they also have clean lyrics as well. And it really throws one off. It, outside of the weirdness of it, though, I, I can't recommend it. Ale Storm has uh, announced a new album Curse of the Crystal Coconut, the, uh, the Pirateers of Metal Return. Well, Lizzie Hale's got to do something with her spare time. Not Hailstorm. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Ailstorm. Ailstorm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I feel a little better about that The now. Scottish pirate metal band, uh, whose front man is also the driving force behind Glory Hammer. Ah, uh, okay. I, uh, Glory Hammer, I enjoy Glory Hammer. That's probably the only power metal I really dig these days for the simple fact that they embrace the ridiculousness of power metal. Is it just me or like... Scottish metal bands. You go to you throwing that together. I immediately know there's going to be some odd shit about it. Well, the it's all based. It's met metal based on pirate shit. <laughs> I guess that's the legacy in it. You know, like well, I don't not, Captain Morgan going out the, out of field. Not to say <laughs> that there is not some serious because the dude plays a guitar. The the front man plays a guitar, and 
while it is a ridiculous band, I think, well, shit, you can't put out an album called Curse of the Crystal Coconut and think, that, well, this is our concept like, wait, album. This is what we do. Yeah, yeah, this is what we got this. Uh, let's see. Apparently, the new Doom uh, video game soundtrack has uh, like a cult chant in it that is done by about 30 different members of metal. Oh, wow. Uh, Tony Campos is a part of it. Let's see, mem- I mean, you're not going to make me want to play Doom, but that's kind of interesting, though. The mute man, the fucking music. Ever since Doom Three has been really good. Oh yeah, no, it's right for the setting. And it's I really just, enjoyed not Doom a- Three because it was more kind of fear based than it was action based. Sure. Doom 2016, man, no fuck that. You're just running around trying to destroy and kill as much shit as possible. Beautiful game, just not my play style. Anymore. Yeah, I. Th- Literally, the first-person shooters, I'm, I, that, that was never my big cup of tea anyway. I've always preferred the shit like, uh, like from behind the character. Oh, uh, third person? Like the GTA model. Yeah, you Gears know. of War. Uh, well, that's Red Xbox. Dead Redemption, too. You know right. what I mean? All those are better. Now, Red Dead, you can view it in first How person. However, when you're playing Skyrim or playing Fallout 4, you're doing it first person. That is true. Yeah, but I mean, but those were But those games were not like run and gun, kill them dead. Well, those are that, stri- strategy. Skyrim came, came out in 2011, so it's not like that's a. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also one that can be played third person. It just doesn't feel right. Now, first person, it's hard to go wrong with that goddamn VR boxing game we picked up last Saturday. Oh, my God, dude. My fucking. My arms are barely recovered. It is, it is a workout, though. Yeah. It is a workout. Uh, and we got to remember to put those little strap deals on so i was thinking it's like fuck man we are flinging these things hither and yon in front of a rather expensive telly yeah don't need to throw one through it right i've uppercut it this, <laughs> trying to throw uppercuts you better make them a little more lunging because i punched well, the, and, you, and you gotta remember and you gotta oh, remember God. turn the ceiling fan off because otherwise uh I might cut our hands off too, oh i so. didn't think of that no i i did it a couple of times last weekend i was like man i'm glad that <laughs> glad, <laughs> glad that some bitch is off are the controllers okay yeah Okay, good. That's all. Oh, yeah, I, no, that's all. Got, I care. Fuck your hands. That's all. Wrist, I care about. So. It's all good. God damn, man. And, and, and so dangerous. Fan, fan wasn't even spinning. Caught myself across the wrist with a blade on the ceiling fan. Shit. Like slinging my arm way back. Yeah. <laughs> like some kind of a jackass. Going for that Swedish spinning back fist. Got to yeah. try that in the game. Sure. But uh, shit, I think we good with metal, man. Yeah? I got nothing else, right, man. Let's move on to MMA. Big card tomorrow, and that, and and I, uh, to be honest with everybody. I always like to be very transparent. The only reason we're doing this fucking podcast today is because the UFC pay per view tomorrow. Very true. What was it two forty nine? Two forty eight. Eight. Yeah. Forty nine. Which uh, before uh, before we get into forty eight, they had the press conference today before the official weigh in. I was As able to do. catch that before I came out here. I wasn't able to catch the official weigh in. Um. There, I I think the hatred is back immediately, and I think Tony Ferguson is in Khabib's head. I hope so. Like, legitimately. Fucking. But, but Khabib seems kind of dumb, and dumb people are easily yeah. easily misled. And he's also a man that really cares about what's in your blood. And I'm, not ta- I'm talking nationality-wise. Because Ferguson's talking about being a Mexican. Right. Legit. That's why he's, that's why he's called El Cucuy. Legit. And uh, all of a sudden, Khabib's just like, hold on, this is bullshit. Don't lie. Don't lie. You're, you're not Mexican. And I'm thinking to myself, Motherfucker, you do realize you had a former heavyweight there that said he was from Mexico, but that fucker was from Arizona. Right. Yeah, in the same camp, same gym. Yeah. Every, yeah, AKA. He really cares about that. You know, you can't say you're Mexican if you're born in America. You can't say you were anything other than American. Who the fuck's Khabib? Donald Trump? Khabib's an idiot. No, there you go. The best line, though, was uh, Tony starts saying shit about Khabib's brother apparently spying on a sparring session yeah. that Ferguson was rocking. And then, of course, as soon as you mention family, Khabib loses shit. Well, don't be talking about my family. And he's like, start losing, like, you know, don't call my brother this. But his brother's a little sketchy. His brother's been caught doing less than savory <laughs> yeah. shit before. And, and Ferguson. As, as, and the same with his dad. Line of the whole thing. I'm not talking shit about your brother. I'm just saying your brother's a piece of shit. Well, there you go. All right, good. <laughs> just telling the truth. There you go. And he had a base. He had a baseball with them, saying like three strikes and you're out, Khabib. 
He, wow. Uh, well, that's Tony being weird. Tony, well, Tony is weird, yeah. Which I've finally come around to. A pre- At first, I, I was really against Like, This is stupid. <laughs> you can go back in previous podcasts from, I don't know, a couple of years ago with Brandon Concerns. Like, I think this guy might be crazy, and I don't like that. Well, actually, he might be crazy, and it might be a good thing. Yeah. Actually. I couldn't remember if I said crazy or dumb. Probably, or both. You know, I don't know. Because, I mean, I think I was talking about him in the same breath as Cody Garbrandt. He's not a Cody Garbrandt. Yeah, no, I've uh, no, I've I've come around on the Tony Ferguson insanity. I just I still get a great mighty chuckle out of the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> fifth when, time that fight's when, announced. When you have people already trying to figure out a way to set up the next Khabib Connor fight. Yeah, and Connor's like, already saying he's going to be the alternate. I am. I'm. I'm just want to see Tony get that win. So then it's like, oh, now what? Now what are you going to do, motherfuckers? Yeah. Huh? Can we all shut the fuck up now? Can we? Especially if Tony comes out and utterly dominates him. Because yeah. you know the immediate response is going to be, give him a rematch. Well, I don't know. But if Tony goes out and fucking dusts him in like the first fucking round I was going to so, say, if you didn't give Aldo a rematch against McGregor, why would you give Khabib a rematch if he gets dusted in the first round? When we start sucking the dick of the fucking Dagestanis, why do we care what their fan base thinks? The, the day that UFC wanted to go conquer other realms. Yeah, they, and they have yet to put on a fight and fucking double him. But here we are like... Trying to make They've shit had a fight happen. Card in I, okay, well, it was a day fight though, right? Uh, I can't remember, but Connor was on it. That right as his rise began, he fought in Ireland, and it was a small venue though. Really? Yeah, back when you could have a uh, fucking sponsors on your shorts. Yeah. Well, I mean, when he most Brando, I want to say Diego Brando. Wow, it's been a while, but because man, I can't remember Connor like pre Dennis Seaver. Yeah, well, I think there's only about two or three fights before that anyway. Although, actually, wasn't Hollow- was Holloway before Seaver? He might have been after. I don't know. Uh, Holloway came, I believe he came after, uh, before Seaver. Okay. Let me see. So that was... Let me see. <laughs> that rhymed. So, yeah, so that's probably... That's about the time I started paying attention. Yeah, let's see. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Nah, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Oh, but. that's cool. I, this is, I live for this. Uh, let's see. Marcus Bremage, the first fight. Holloway next, Brandau after that, which was in uh, in Ireland, and Poirier, Seaver, and then Mendez for the featherweight interim belt, and we know the rest from there. Right. Hmm. Well, yeah. Man, I don't know. I got to go back and watch that shit because apparently it was uh, – does Tony Ferguson have a UFC belt? I guess he's got the interim, doesn't he? No. No? Then what the fuck's this headline about from TMZ? Of, uh, he brought a belt out and, like, Khabib kicked it off the stage. Okay. Well. It was an it was a classic UFC belt, too. I hate saying it's classic when I want to say the better one. Yeah. Oh. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. UFC 248 is tomorrow. Um, and believe it or and, not, ladies and gentlemen, there was only one person that missed weight. And it wasn't Joel Romero. Wasn't anybody of import, right? Uh, no, it was uh, uh, on the early prelims. Oh, good. Emily Whitmire came in, pound and a half heavy, and she looked like warm death coming out to the scale. Remember wow. Aspen Ladd? Yeah. Not as scary as that, but she still looked like she had the flu or something. Yeah. Really, really scary. She looked fine, I guess, later. But the fight's still going on. Uh, let's see. Bantamweight, you got Guido Canetti fighting Dana Bag- Batgirl. I wonder what Guido, I wonder what his, uh, what, what country he hails from originally. It better be like Saskatoon. That'd be all right. Somewhere out in the wilds of Manitoba. Uh, Argentina. Oh, well, I'll be damned. Still pretty, I didn't, I would not have guessed Argentina at all. Uh, let's see, we've got Gerald Mearshart fighting Darren Wynn to open up your prelim card. The returning Sean O'Malley. Yeah, he was out for what, drugs, right? Uh, yeah, he popped hot. Two year, two burger. God, which now, which is weird to me. Because if that guy had been a former champ, he'd got one year. And you know what? He comes back and he got horrible tattoos while he was away. Great. He has like a star, he has face tattoos. Man, I, I, that is a trend that I hope fucking goes the way of the blue suede shoe. Face tattoos are not complimentary unless you're a killer or Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah, and it even took took a long time for the Mike Tyson one to grow on me. But man, Yeah. It's like, oh well now he's old and grizzled. Like he he's earned that tattoo now. Yeah. God, uh man. fighting Jose Alberto Quinones in your prelim main event. Kinda like Quinones, yeah. 
I don't know if uh, O'Malley's a hype train or legit yet. Because he fought that one time, did well, and then popped hot. Yeah. Because he's a contender series cat. I guess we'll see. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 guy, the guy talks a huge game. He talks a bigger game than what he's presented to anyone. So. Right. And I already know how you're going to pick the opener of the main card. Cowboy Alex Oliver fighting Max Griffin. Max Griffin, go all day, son. All well, day. Oliver did make weight. Well, okay, so he actually decided to do his job for yeah. a change. Well, it's that, it, and it, um, it, he fucking made weight in his previous fight as well. But it's the the thing that's always going to bug me, that motherfucker came in what thirteen pounds or some nonsense. It was over. ridiculous. I mean, to the point where it's like, so you didn't even like try to cut weight then. You see, you you, and then and then and the, if that wasn't bad enough, then he wins the fucking fight because he didn't have to make a weight cut. The Will Brooks did. fight, and then he gets out there, starts talking shit, acts like he just won the belt, and just dancing around, happy go lucky. And it's like I wish somebody would put this motherfucker to sleep. Well, all his other fights, this is his first fight at welterweight. Yeah, because the other ones were all at 155. But uh, came in at 161 and a half against Will Brooks. Well, that's still a stupid amount. Six and, and a half pounds. And then TKO'd him in the third round. Yeah, and then and immediately you would have thought that Alex, or uh, it is Alex Oliveira, right? Yeah. Yeah. You would have thought that. that it's not Charles. Yeah, no. Charles is the good one. Right. No, you would have thought this motherfucker just won International Fight Week and got himself a 50K bonus coming guaranteed the way he was acting. Like, no, bitch, you're giving up 30% of what you just won to the man you're talking shit about. Right. And then the real cowboy came in and beat shit out of him. Oh, yeah. No, no. Cerrone did, did quick work of him. Yeah. Echoes of Ancients picks Max Griffin. I think that's unanimous. I think that's, that's safe. Yeah, that's, that's a good pick. Next welterweight fight, Neil Magny fighting Li Zhang Lang. I want to go Magny, but God damn it, these people coming out of China are murderers now. And Neil Magny is not what you call consistent. No. I mean, he's a lot like, remember that cat from uh, Jamaica that... That dude would come out and just decimate somebody and then turn around and just get his ass Uriah Hall. kicked like three times in a row. Yeah, Uriah yeah. Hall. He's, he's, he's in the same vein as that guy. Uh, although, although Magny had, had like, he rattled off like a seven-fight win streak way back when, but and he began to struggle. Which, you know, I, I think that, but that shows, like, he has shit that he has to work on. He's been going back and forth. He beat Condit who I, I think Condit's last fight was against Neil Magny in December of 2017. Knocked out with Craig White. Knocked out that uh, that Scottish dude. And then got knocked out by Ponzinibbio in November of 2018. Shit. First fight in over a year. Yeah. Now, Ponzinibbio, his, <laughs> his skills have expanded dramatically from when we sure. first saw him. So. But but still, but you're still right. There's no consistency where Neil Magny's concerned. And you need consistency to be good. Yep. Like a good, good gravy. I mean, I, I, I want to see your off day where you still fucking win the fight, maybe by decision, but, you know, yeah. instead of sleeping somebody. But, man, Magny's not that guy. I agree. I'm going Li Jing Lang. Uh, next up, what I think is going to be the fight of the night. Lightweight Benny L. Darius fighting Drakkar Close. Darius can put on a fucking fight. That, that guy, I mean, the 50K bonuses that that guy has got to his name, it, it, it tells a tale <laughs> of some Darius. success, man. Three uh, performances of the nights Again, a uh, fight with Crookshank, Dober, and uh, Camacho. Yeah. No, Darius is the it, real His guy. last two fights have been performance of the night. Yeah. I mean, he's got... He's he's got what the UFC wants, and the fact that he's Middle Eastern, but but he's a Christian and he's lived here all of his life basically. Right. Um, but yet he can still kind of speak to that, so he's kind of an international star as well as having the skill set that'll back up the message he's trying to send. I, I dig, right. I dig. Jakar Close is not what you call closer either. Not to put a pun on his last name. This yeah. guy is not finish a fight in the UFC via finish. Right. It's all been decisions. Yeah. I mean... Mostly unanimous. 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 Unanimous decision. The, uh, <laughs> and fighting a guy like Dariush, who does fucking look for the finish. Yeah. I, I think if you're a point That's fighter... That's why he got paid the last two, and they were both subs. I think if you're a point fighter, which is what Drakkar Close is, I think that's a problem when you're facing a guy like Benil Dariush. Yeah. Close is a striker. Dariush likes it on the ground. I like Dariush with a... Like head and arm choke. choke. Head and arm. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. Some kind of choke, probably. Third round head and arm choke. Pay them both 50 grand for their day on top of what Darius is going to win. Then we get on to the important shit. Co-main event for the women's strongweight title. 
Zhang Welly or Welly Zhang. Welly Zhang, yeah. And I mean, I guess if you're calling it Zhang Welly, you're doing it right. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know. That's what it is on. That's what it is on here on the uh, Wikipedia. I guess, but they're going to introduce her to my Bruce Buffer is going to say Welly Zhang. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I, I, I as, as you should. Fighting Yoan Yon J check, one fifteen. She got tits, beat Michelle Waterson. Now she's fighting for the belt. Who you got? I'd like to pick Joanna, but I can't in good faith, man. I think that Chinese chick is going to fucking tear her apart. She punches like a dude. Yeah, man. And she used to say that about Joanna, but now Joanna kicks legs like a girl. Yeah, man. I lost a lot of respect for Joanna when she like was throwing a fit when she lost to Rose the second time. Yeah. Saying, I, I hit her more. Yeah, but you didn't hit her better. Yeah, this isn't, a difference. A, this isn't an amateur karate event where you get points for just making no. contact. No, no. Talking no. about damage here. And she was able to walk out of that cage with her belt. She didn't need to be helped out. Two and three in her last five yeah. is Joanna. Now, keep in mind, two of those are Rose and Amayunas. And, and the is, uh, other is one is the baddest bitch at 125. So that's you. where it's kind of hard for me to really decide. But I, but the problem I have, Whaley Zhang can knock, she can knock, she can knock women out. I mean, knock them out. She did to a garage. I haven't seen you want to really do that outside of volume. And that was way back when. That's like five, six fights ago. She's been in the UF. She was in the UFC a little over a year before she won the belt. And I'm talking days. Like yeah. she, Her first fight was August 4th, 2018. She won the belt August 31st, 2019. Yeah, man. No one brings that up. Right. Talk about Israel Adesanya winning a belt in two years. She did it in a little over one. Again, that's the fucking UFC, knowing there are people in China. And the UFC does not mind going head-to-head with uh, one FC. Sure. Or one championship, I, I guess, now. but I would say this, though. I think the competition would be better in one FC. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I hate it when you can detect the UFC is trying to keep people happy. They do it all the time for Brazilian fighters. Oh, absolutely. It's getting harder to do these days. Yeah. You know? Right. That's why Aldo's fighting for the 135 belt in May. Yes. Fuck is that, man? Dude, you, you lose two fights in a row and you get you get congratulated with fucking a title it's shot. It's Uncle Dana playing with his figures. You but know? then again, oh, I want you to win. Well, and let's not forget they keep thinking that Cejudo is marketable. So if you have Jose Aldo go in and then Henry Cejudo is able to beat him, they're gonna go. See, now we can market this guy. Yeah. man. If you can't market a fucking Olympic gold medalist, you, you're not gonna be able to. The guy's creepy. He's weird. Nobody likes him. He's fucking, he's, he's, he's reprehensible. He killed the flyweight division. Uh, yeah, well, flyweight new, division had needs Cejudo, to go Had Cejudo lost, which the argument can be made, he lost that fight. Against Demetrius, yeah. Mighty Mouse still be doing his thing. Sure. That guy would probably have about eight more jewels on that belt. Yeah. Because he would defend every four to six months. We always saw him. Audience. Always. But Dana White didn't like him. It's like, no. well, I don't know why you don't like the 125 champ. I never got my head around the fact Dana White sometimes doesn't like champs in certain divisions. It is a fact he couldn't draw, but it wasn't because of him. He was nope. not promoted at all. Well, and, and let's be real. Fucking nobody likes to watch 125ers. Mm, yeah. Unless, you know, you go from a back suplex to an arm bar in midair. It's like, oh, you know what? Oh, sure. How can we not get this guy paid? Right. But he's getting paid in one FC and doing Twitch shit. But I like I like speed and power, and you don't really start seeing that a lot until 155 nope. and preferably 170. At Speaking about speed and power, I'm going with the current champ to defend and do it probably with a finish. With a Wei Li Zhang? Yeah. No, no, that's the right call. I, I think that fight's over in like a round and a half probably. You think that fast? Yeah. I, I, I think so. Joanna's going to get planted. I think Rose exposed the fact that she can't really take a really good solid punch. Yeah. And Wayne Jang's going to throw him in volume. I didn't know Rose Namunas could put people on her ass with a with one punch, and she did it's it that, to Joanna. It's, it's that weird wrestler's overhand right, you know. Right. Your main event of the evening. It's finally happening. Yoel Romero is fighting for the 185 belt. He made weight, fighting the style bender, who uh, came in at buck 84 and a half. Yeah. Who do you have and why? Man, I, as much as I like Adesanya's skills, I don't really care for his confidence. I, That's I, how I feel about Joanna, by the way. Yeah. After getting your ass beat the way you did twice, once by Rose, I won't say she got her ass beat that second fight with Rose. Right. She lost it, but she didn't get her ass beat. 
and then get your ass beat by Valentina, you beat the karate hottie. Right. And you're getting a title shot. I really think you need to show a little more, you know. Now, Israel Adesanya, granted, he's the middleweight champ. I get it. He beat the living piss out of Robert Whitaker, but that's uh, not not really to much surprise, nor right. aplomb, you know. I am happy to see it off of Robert Whitaker, though. Oh, absolutely, because that guy's only going to fight once every two years. I'm actually shocked he's not a, he's, he didn't move his camp to AKA, because that's kind of their bag. Man, yeah, he would have done really well over there. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, no, no, here's what you do. You win the championship, and then you sit back and count them dollars until the UFC starts threatening to strip your shit, and then you fight. But um, Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Having said all that, Yoel Romero, granted, he's going to have a fucking disproportionate size disadvantage, but Yoel's never, that's never usually a thing, because he's always a size disadvantage. Right. If Yoel's got reach on you, fuck, you should probably be cutting to 155. Man, yeah, because Yoel is is granite. I mean, he's he's made of stone. Not the biggest reach. 73 and a half inch reach versus Adesanya, like who is rocking. Right? See him. Or 81, actually. 80. 80, okay. 80 inch. So yeah. he, he's dropping over half a foot. Sure. But, I mean, but that's kind of normal for Yoel. So if you're, if you're a a watcher of the sport you've seen yoel whip some ass before i think he got robbed twice fighting whitaker oh absolutely the the second time he robbed himself because he didn't make weight yeah well that's and the and the uh, the rock old fight he would have been the interim champ had he made weight yeah man uh, I, uh, I, I i like yoel in that fight I really i'm picking do. yoel romero because I think Yoel's going to get a finish. And I think it's going to come kind of early. Second, third, I probably think, third round. I don't think it hits the championship. Here's rounds. the thing. Blue belt and BJJ for Israel Asanya. Dude's a kickboxer. Like, legit kickboxer. Sure. I, Yoel can take who he wants to the ground. Right. Chris, Rod, Chris Reidman. Chris Weidman is a wrestler. Got taken down pretty easily by sure. a huge old man. Well, and Yoel is, I mean, his wrestling skills, as much as it aggravates me because the guy doesn't put him on display as often as I would like to see, his game, where it gets really dangerous, is when he gets your fucking back against the cage. Yeah. And that clinch fighting shit, Yoel is a fucking seasoned veteran, man. If it's on the ground and he can land one elbow, he's probably going to land four or five. So, I mean, so Adesanya can talk all, all day he wants about fucking John Jones and everything, but when he gets finished by an old Cuban man, and I think it's going to happen. Yeah, either that or we become one of the many shit talkers that voted against Israel Desanya and he proves us wrong, yeah, which I'm fine with too. Could be. I mean, that's that's part of that's part of the game. But I want to see someone in their 40s win a belt. Yeah, and Yoel's the one to do it. Probably. It wasn't Dan Henderson, God damn it, but it might be Yoel Romero. Sure. Either way, it should be a good card tomorrow. Yep, looking forward to it. UFC 248. That shit will be. Uh, Early prelims on uh, ESPN Plus. I think the prelims are probably going to be on ESPN or ESPN yeah. Two, right? And then, uh, and then on to the pay per view. So, let's get on to them tasty, delicious picks. All right. Uh, let's see. Picks is uh, what are you drinking today, sir? Might crack open one of those bottles of liquor. <laughs> now we got the Glen Levitt, and we also have uh, some rye whiskey yeah. there, the old bullet rye. I think one wouldn't hurt. It is March, after all. It is March. What are you rocking? Um, man, I'm probably just drinking Budweiser, I think. I'm going to probably uh, try to keep it a little easy because we're supposed to have a nice day tomorrow. I'd like to actually get some shit done and instead of sleep till fucking noon and then, uh, then get ready for the pay-per-view. <laughs> so. see, th- see, that is my goal, to sleep till noon and get ready for the pay-per-view. Well, I actually have some shit i got to take care of around here. So. Ah, you uh, motherfucker. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. Where are we at? Uh, what are you listening to? I'm going to listen to that crematory band and see if he sounds like the Cookie Monster. Okay. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> it's not really a pick. Yeah. It's more just a, a, a quest. Sure. <laughs> um, well, obviously, we let in with uh, Corrosion of Conformity. That's probably where my evening will go. Not a bad way to go. All right. And then uh, fights tomorrow. Yoel Romero is able to land the same flying knee landed on Weidman to Israel Adesanya. It's going to be quite the trip, but I think he gets it done. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Wow, who do we have? Where do I want to go with this? Who do we have that? Um, we're assuming it's good. Oh, Ben uh, Yel Daryush. Yeah, 
Um, I'm going to go knee bar second round. Ooh. Remember, we saw one fight card. It was like back to back knee bars. Yeah. And it was that weird one. Like, he had the fucking head between his legs, like just right. grabbing his foot and pulling yeah. it up. Yeah. It's like that shit you do to your little brother. Yeah. They usually come, whatever, whatever happens, it, you, usually there's a weird theme that seems to always evolve around the same finish. You know? Right. All right. Anyway, that's it for us this week. We're probably not going to do one next week, I wouldn't imagine, unless something fucking just wacky happens tomorrow. But uh, likely as not, we'll be back in probably a couple of weeks. We'll do something fun. Yeah, we'll, uh, We're fun, guys. Get on out there for you, and uh, well, we'll continue to keep doing what we can do, and fuck it, man. I mean, it's... It's not be- that we don't like what we do. It's just, God damn it, it starts feeling like a job after a while. And it's kind of nice to not do it man. after doing something for many moons. Um, t-shirts, man, if you're looking for one, uh, hit us up over YouTube. But most of you listening probably know how to get a hold of us individually. So that's true. That's not bad either. So Hit up your local payphone. Yeah. All right, other than that, friends, uh, enjoy your fucking Friday. Enjoy the fights tomorrow, UFC 248. And uh, God damn, man, we'll, uh, we'll be back and hit this thing up again. And... Uh, about two weeks, two or three weeks. Let's let the riff speak for itself. Riffs, riffs are riffs are riffs. Oh, by the way, happy birthday to Jerry Cantrell next week on Wednesday. Hell, yeah. praise right. to the old sage. Yeah. Hey, uh, you fucks, enjoy your weekend, huh? <laughs>